This morning we are looking at children with special needs, um, specifically children suffering from autism. And I have two lovely ladies in the studio with me to tell us all about a campaign that they're spearheading. Um, the first and foremost is Louise Kimba. She's the deputy um, head at the School for Children with Learning Disabilities in the UK, I believe. And also Cornelia Boating, who is the founder and director of Woodfield Manor um, Autistic and Special Needs School at Frafraha near Adenta. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. It's good to have you on. Right, Cornelia, I'll start with you first and foremost. Um, tell us about your journey. Um, it has been a, a fraught journey um, because I personally am a mother of a special needs boy, I'm D I'm David, whom Louise knows because David attended Louise's school. Um, David did not speak till the age of six or after six and has um, sort of had or was diagnosed with autism and um, special educational needs. And he's gone through the interventions of Manor School and has come out of all the difficulties. And that was not just the interventions, but with the support of family as well. So because they end up not um, being socially adept. There's lots of work to be done with these children, but once the interventions are um, identified and you work with the child gradually, they come out of it. So How old is David? David's 16, 16. now. Um, um, yes, and he, read, he reads, he writes, he acts, he wants to be an actor, so he's acting now. He's in sixth form as we speak, um, special needs sixth form. Right. Was he born with it? Give us a bit of background about autism, actually. What, what is autism? Can I get Louise yes, of course, to please, please speak come about autism? Um, yeah. Autism is a lifelong developmental disability. So people who have autism are born with autism, and they will have autism for the whole of their lifespan. How does it manifest? What exactly are their challenges? What are they able to do and unable to do? Um, the autism is a spectrum, so the severity of how autism affects you changes for individuals, um, but the, it affects three main areas. Um, the first area is around social communication, another area is around social, um, in my, uh, social interactions and imagination. Um, so many people with autism find interactions very difficult. They can find it very difficult to speak, as Cornelia described with her son, that he didn't start speaking until he was six. Some people with autism never start speaking. They um, tend to find different ways of communicating, so using gesture or symbol. Um, uh, there can be um, effect. So is it mainly a speech defect or a disorder? Or it goes beyond that? It goes beyond that. It goes into relationship building, um, uh, understanding of the world around you. Um, there are lots of things we use within our speech about, um, hey, that's cool. Um, it doesn't mean it's cold, but for an autistic person, something that's cool would mean that, which would mean that they would find it very difficult to understand how conversations progressing. Um, but is, is it curable? Can it be cured? There are Completely. no known cures at this point in time. A lot of research is happening and a lot of communities feel that they have different ways of um, um, supporting people with autism to manage better. But the best cures that we have at the moment are around interventions that Cornelia, Cornelia was describing. So things that are in place through education. Um, and that's why I'm here to work with Cornelia, staff at Cornelia's school to bring some of those interventions to Ghana and take some of the things that Cornelia is using at her school back to the UK mm. to support Do, do they have any system. special ability? Some people with autism have special abilities but it's not true for all people with autism. Um, people with autism always have a learning disability as well. Um, and that's something that's really important to remember because um, autism can be pe portrayed in film and um, by Hollywood as people having these savant skills that make them um, 
genius. Mm -hmm. We're told Bill Gates had autism, is that true? He may have been on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing his, it, the, it didn't affect him in terms of his learning disabilities, but for most people with autism, they have learning disabilities. Okay. Right, now, Cornelia, you have a very special, uh, amazing story. You left the UK, you sold everything, mortgaged your house, and moved down to Ghana to set up a special school. Well, I mortgaged the house to do up the place for the school, um, just so Ghana will benefit from the interventions. We also do lots of fundraising events in the UK to support um, what we do. So as you see from some of the slides, we do fish and chips quiz nights and <laughs> anything to draw in money because we've got... To raise awareness. To ra and the raising of awareness is here in Ghana because there's a lot of taboos and stigma exactly. attached to children and some children are termed as insuba, which I mean, I don't like know. Like they're from it's, the water. They're from the water and I think because people don't understand they the do not understand and it's attributed. frustrating and it makes parents powerless and helpless and it's not only in Ghana even in the UK parents do feel hopeless and helpless because the children you do not understand that particular child he's not acting like a regular child um, you feel here the stigma you feel ashamed to take them into public they are kept hidden in houses i suppose that's a bit of different for us in the uk we go out with our children we get them to mix in the community so they can learn how to socialize in the community whereas here we keep them hidden um so that they, they, they are sort of a shame i, I do know families um, don't get married into if they know there's um, it's and witchcraft. It's, the there's so much um, around it. The myths is what we are trying to break the myth. Um, I do I, I, you know, understand what um, Louise did say that not all of them come with those special abilities but at the same time if you work with them, you nurture them, you will untap some potential. And it's that potential that the school is trying to do at this minute. So they do not end up being able to do the Pythagoras theorem or something sort of um, as intricate. As yes. that. But um, they do have their own qualities. So someone you find can draw. As we sat here, they'll draw us. So that is their ability, and they, didn't, they don't need to go to school for that. Um, you'll find someone who sits at a piano and plays away just because they've got the tune. They haven't actually mastered or gone to music lessons. That's not to say you don't put them through to that. I mean, if you see a potential, then you develop it. But what we are trying to do is to ensure that they get the living skills. They don't become a burden to their parents and society. To try to get them to live as normal a life as, as possible. As totally. Mm -hmm. totally. Tell us about the challenges you faced having to set up the Woodfield Manor um, School. It, it was very difficult setting up Woodfield Manor. In, in the UK, everyone was rushing to help us. Um, Louise's school gave us equipment, the chairs, the tables for the school, computers. We got everything. We got a large container full of stuff. Shipping it here cost us thousands. Then when we got here, we couldn't get it out because we'd, we'd applied for an exemption and we didn't get we it. We didn't get it. And then we were sort of scraping around trying to find money to open the school for the children, which we did. We scraped around and then we put together 90,000 or whatever it was. So eventually you've been able to set up oh, the school. But there's still a lot more to be there's done, isn't so there? so much to be done. Um, the, after our first year, we evaluated what we've done and we realized that children are responding to the interventions. And, and how many students do you have at the moment? We have 20, but in any given day, you can have nine children. You can have 13 children. And that's because of where we are sited as well. We are at Fafraha. And it's really not in close proximity to Adabraka to or Kaswa. And so we have about five children living in Kaswa. They don't come to school for weeks because of trap. Well, the thing is, parents were not going to send them to school anyway. Now you are creating the awareness for them to come. They come today and then tomorrow they feel it's burdensome. And then they don't bring the children. So that's why we are appealing for a school bus to be able to pick the children up because we try, we're trying to run a structured program and here today and then not here for two weeks. Mm -hmm. 
does not work so it will be good for them to come every day our children grow their own food as part of gardening they do their own growing uh, the interventions we give them include things like swimming um courtesy of Erata hotel the children have access to a swimming pool and so they go and it works for them as louise will confirm that swimming particularly sort of calms them down i mean i know manor school has this sensory pool yeah and it works uh, we have we have a lot of facilities at our school to support the children to unlock all of their potential sure. and right. make them feel happy and part of a larger community um, which Cornelia School Woodfield Manor don't have that's a real that's a real battle to bring in some of the interventions that we use in the UK to a school where there are no real resources to be able to deliver mm -hmm. um, the, the things kind that, of thing that, that you we want know to. that research shows that pu pupils with autism really need to make progress. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be working with Cornelia as an ongoing project mm -hmm. to see how we can support with making things out of everyday items, mm -hmm. how we can adapt things, but regardless of those things money is still regardless a of the limitations you're still going factor. to make it work right now would you also be um, kind of supporting the teachers of the school to um, help them develop their practice yes um, whilst I've been working at the school now for two days and throughout the time that I've been at the school staff there have asked me about how do I move this child on this child has this ability how can I take that further so I've had quite a lot of conversations with people about what the next steps with children's learning are and how they can really plan for those individual needs because um, at Woodfield Manor there are children uh, I think your youngest is six and the oldest is 16. There's quite a lot of um, difference just between, between those age groups, um, let alone their, um, their conditions. So it's been really exciting and um, I think there, there's huge potential for those children to move forward and become people who are more independent and able to access the community in more ways than they probably are able to do so now. Um, so it's a really exciting project and right. I hope that it will be a project that will run and run. Yes. Right. Now, Cornelia, apart from the school bus that you're advocating for, you're also trying to do more. You're trying to um, build a boarding facility so it will be easier to have the children there and be able to help and deal with them better, isn't it? Yes. Um, as I said, when we did the evaluation after our first year of running, we, we realised that what we are doing is working with more help it will work even better and once um as louise is saying good practice is instilled and we continue to do that then that will work but it cannot work currently on the capacity our resource capacity um we are really pushed to the limit i mean um we uh, we pay we literally when i say we it's probably i myself and i mm. pay staff on a monthly basis do the children pay any money at all do they pay school some fees some of the children do okay. some of the children do and um, but the majority of the they children can't afford cannot to. but you still take them anyway yes what is the criteria for admitting the students um well it's we do an assessment so usually when we have um, an interest shown and a child brought into school, the child goes round and looks round. And then two of our teachers actually go home to the child's um, home oh. surroundings and sit there just observe. observing because um, some of the children don't eat certain foods, doesn't want to be touched, um, covers their no, um, ears are the least noise can't stand some smells and it could be just everyday smells but we have just overlooked it and we are carrying on with these children so we go and do that observation so we then draw up an individual educational plan for them it doesn't mean the maths and the english kind of educational plan but how we would work according to their them. individual needs. absolutely okay. and so we know that when he comes in he's not toilet trained most of our children are not toilet trained we have a lady in school who literally cleans them. them but we are not just toilet training them we actually are helping them to come out of that stage so sort of stop doing that and go to normal toilet we also use the picture exchange communication system f 
for some children who have that um, not all children can have um, sort of use that but some do and so we we use it for those who can and so when they come in they rely on people to offer them basic needs like water but if after some time they have the picture exchange the photo or the picture that shows a cup of water and then physical cup of water they make the link after a while they will when they want water they will bring you the picture and you give them water when um, a child becomes reliant on their mother just their mother and their father for water basic I'm just using that as an example what happens if he goes to visit someone they will never offer them water they'll sit and die of thirst because they can they are non-verbal they cannot say I want water so you give them water when you want to give them water and it's a basic human need he has to be able to show you a picture of a cup and you would run and give them a water to drink so we are just giving them basic life skills it, it can't be easy can it it's, it's a difficult task isn't it I think it's very difficult. It is very difficult, but it's extremely rewarding it's and a lot satisfying. of fun. Yes. <laughs> Have you noticed since you started, how long has the school been in? Uh, it's been a year now. A year now. Have you noticed um, change in behavior or attitude, especially when it comes to the families of these young ones? With the stigma and the misunderstanding yes. and the yes. lack we, of we, education? We, we've had a few... We've had a few um, some brought their children and then three months or down the line they said oh she's still not talking but your child was seven when you brought the child they hadn't spoken and then when they came he says but she's still not t talking so i'm You're taking her miracles. out so i said no we didn't say we were going to, to give you miracles what we said was we're going to make her life livable and and so they take them but before he took the child out he recognized the fact that her daughter, the daughter was very hyper. She comes to school and runs around the compound the whole day. So there's someone running after her, literally running after her. And by that three months, she had calmed down because she'd gone into a routine. So she was following routine. She would join our circle time. And then we realized she could sing. She's nonverbal, but she harms every song. So when we want to do something with her we know how to do it we sing and then you get it easy with her so you know you you've got to work with the children to it's find a gradual those. it's a gradual thing it? yes wow. tell us again about the needs what are you looking for what do you need well we we really really need sponsors because as i said at the last call we had 105 calls um following a peace fm call out to parents and out of the 105 calls 75 of them called from kumasi bogatanga tamale wa and you know you have to tell them it's a day school you can't come from a thousand miles but we are building a boarding facility and so as soon as we finish that we can get your child take your child so we've taken down names but that boarding facility cannot be done by just one person and, these and so days, far that's what's been happening that's you, what's it's been, been happening. a one woman show and and um uh in the uk where we tend to raise funds things are difficult the climate financial climate is not so good so in a month we get say a donation of 150 pounds um it's great but it doesn't even pay staff you know, you know what i mean yeah. and we've got to pay electricity and gas and the food and you know all that so for the facility we are building we'll have the classrooms it will have the therapy rooms and a nurse room we'll have the swimming pool a small one not a swimming pool fancy swimming pool but a therapeutic, a therapeutic swimming pool for the children to meet their sensory needs we'll have a sensory room so that's all planned into it and we'll have a library and actually it will be a library that can be accessed by the community as well you know so we we're trying to do that and it would be great if we had sponsors to have this up as soon as possible because parents are crying out out there mm. and there is no help and we could help these you children. Help. Uh, how's the response been with regards to sponsorship? Has um, it been with forthcoming? regards to sponsorship, Ghanaians are very good with sponsorship. I mean, um, I, I don't want to mention names, um, but 
we, we've had, had some help. We've had someone who has been um, our pillar of strength, Sam Jonah, and he's sort of supported us a lot in lots of ways. Um, but it, you can't re rely on one, one person. person. You know, we should all help these children, and it helps the nation. It takes a burden of the nation because we have in Accra we have the Jowulu School. It takes 150 children. It's four. You know, and our mainstream schools, I know Ghana Education Service is working to have integrated education. But what you find is integrated education may not work for children who have very profound issues. They may still have to go to special needs schools like us. And it's for that that we should support each other. Okay, thank you very much for coming in this morning and sharing your story with us. Um, hopefully we'll try to create as much awareness as we can and um, all the best to you. Um, you. My guests have been Louise Kimber, who's the deputy head at the School for Children with Learning Disabilities in the UK, and also Cornelia Boateng, founder and director of Whitfield Manor Autistic and Special Needs School at Frafraha near Adenta. They're here this morning appealing to corporate Ghana and individuals, anybody who can help, to um, build a boarding facility at their institution. So hopefully we'll all do our best to help.